at the workplace, how can one be at one with what one is doing if one is jealous of the other guy who just got a new Porsche? It all, it, on a personal level, you can't focus on your work if those other buttons are being pushed all the time. Well, that's a very good point. And that, that's why in a corporate training, as an example, we would focus on the benefit of focusing. Because if you, if you know what you want and you know how to get it, which are the first criteria, right. is, okay, this is what I want, this is how I'm going to go about getting it, and you put energy in that direction, you're going to have a higher success rate than worrying about what somebody said yesterday or going off in these other directions. So that's, that's a matter of how conscious you are of where your mind is, you see. So I may not approach um, a Fortune 500 company by saying, well, we're going to raise your consciousness because that doesn't, mm -hmm. they don't relate in business in those terms. But if I say, look, how much more effective are you going to be at your work if you are able to direct your mind towards just these activities that you've allocated them for, right. you see, and, and what if you, every time that you felt fear or this or that, you had a register where you could identify it and then shift what state you were in and shift what you were thinking. Do you see how that would benefit you? Every time you were scared to say, ask for a sale, or pick up the phone to make a call, or talk to your boss, or address the board of directors, whatever it is for you, you yeah. see? So we empower people to take conscious control over their mind. That changes their life. That's great. And that's essentially a discipline of jnana yoga, or it's uh, what Buddhists might call mindfulness training. And there's a, there's a way of becoming aware of the part of you that's aware, observing the observer. What part of you is witnessing what your mind is thinking, saying, and doing? See, it's not you thinking. You're not angry anymore. Your brain's a computer. Right. Neurological activity is just like a program running that's been downloaded from external source somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now you, as the observer, the witness, or the consciousness, can look at your mind and, and we st we'll go through, we'll identify what are the processes of thought, what are the feelings that have been rehearsed that don't serve you anymore, and let's change them. We'll create a new thought form. We can literally create new ways of thinking and feeling to serve you. So you're being rewired. Reprogram. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Rewiring the new, new neurological in, in what the bleep, you know, they actually showed you when there was a shift of consciousness, they actually showed the axions and dendrites, right. the synapses are the places right. they connect. They will move, they will change. Yeah. They do realign. So this is what's so exciting is so much of science is starting to really validate the mechanism yeah. of how consciousness works. So just like up in the frontal and temporal lobes of our neocortex, yeah. this is the last part of the brain to develop. Right. Well, the yogis knew this was the crown chakra. Yeah. When you do a third eye meditation, you're drawing energy up to the crown. You're developing your sixth sense. Yeah. This is where we store the memory of who we are and why we were born. Yeah. The transcendence, the Buddha sitting on the thousand petal lotus. Yeah. There's a thousand axions and dendrites conducting mm -hmm. your nerve energy, your kundalini, from the center of your spinal column. It frays open like a rope end. And this energy moves through these axions and dendrites, like a thousand petal lotus opening up in your head, up into your crown chakra. So you see, there has always been metaphors that the ancients had ways of showing us, but now science can actually kind of put these pieces together and, and give us an explanation for why we do these things. There's an endocrine response when we do a third eye meditation. We secrete, we stimulate the pituitary and the pineal gland. They release peptides. It causes a relaxation response. Brainwave frequencies drop. You know. So we live in a renaissance of consciousness. The sciences are, are developing at rapid pace and consciousness is awakening before our eyes. Conversations like this just weren't happening when I was born. Mm. But in my lifetime, all of a sudden we've seen these radical shifts. It seems like it's taken a long time when we look at it from year to year to year, especially if you're ahead of the bell curve, like what's happening with everyone else? Yeah. But the good news is that it's happening. And if you can see how you and how everybody that's watching this show realizes that they are playing a part in something that's going to change the world forever, we're bringing about a better world just by thinking about how to. That's exciting. That's great.